What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with more Destiny 2 news, and of course it's Thursday, so we get Bungie's weekly Twid update. It's already been a busy week, we've had reveals for the upcoming Brave Arsenal of Weapons in Into the Light. Bungie actually go ahead and offer some clarifications on the perk rolls and a couple of other items associated with that. Plus we have info on other updates that we'll see in April, and a few other things to round up in the video. So, as always guys, I hope you enjoy this one today, and if you do, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. Plus, get subscribed and I'll keep you posted with all of the upcoming content, but otherwise, let's get into it. And yesterday Bungie revealed the perk pools for all of the weapons coming in into the light, although they do have a couple of clarifications on that, so they say a few things were out of date in the Dev Inside article, so for a couple of quick corrections on the available perk rolls. Firstly, Succession will not be able to roll with desperate measures. That was one of the bonuses they said would be on that weapon, but I guess they've decided that it no longer will be able to get that. On top of that, they've said that Edge Transit will roll with Autoloading Holster instead of Ambitious Assassin an adrenaline junkie instead of one for all. Kind of a shame there, Ambitious Assassin would have been pretty juicy, but finally, Hung Jory should have read Explosive Payload instead of Explosive Rounds. So in that case, they'd basically just used the D1 name for that perk. So a couple of minor corrections on some of the weapons there, and share your thoughts on those rolls down below. A couple of other things to mention before we get into twin things though, and related to the weapons for Into the Light, Chris Proctor recently spoke on a podcast and gave a couple more insights, and he said talking about enhanceable perks on randomly rolled weapons. The wall players will be able to enhance the perks on the upcoming Into the Light, Prophecy Dungeon, and Playlist weapons. This feature will only be available for perks in the column 3 and 4, and they point out that players won't be able to customise Barrel, Magazine, or Masterworks on these weapons. And Chris Proctor also said that only the limited edition variants of Into the Light weapons can get an extra perk in column 3 and 4, but that players will be able to enhance all four of these perks in the last two columns when the final shape drops, so that's a positive. Of course, separately, there's been a lot of feedback about Bungie time-gating the release of the Into the Light weapons, or more specifically, the limited edition variants of them, which will roll out over a number of weeks. There's been a lot of feedback about it, so it's possible that Bungie will have further updates on that subject. We'll have to wait and see. But also in the recent podcast, Chris Proctor confirmed that weapons like Chroma Rush, Dust Rock Blues, and Trophy Hunter, as well as a bunch of other items, were considered to return as part of Into the Light, but they had to go through a painful process of selecting exactly which weapons would be brought back and there were a total of 40 weapons on the list, but they had to figure out how many they could reasonably make, and it ended up being 12, which is a surprisingly small number. But of course, they are relatively impactful weapons looking at Destiny's history. So some interesting insights there, and I'll link the blog covering the recent podcast down below. Onto the Twid though, and they talk a little bit more about future reveals, as well as Into the Light stuff that's been revealed this week. And again, they reiterate that when Final Shape launches in June, all of the brave weapons will be among the enhanceable weapons. So it's going to be cool to get that system, and they reiterate about visiting the Hall of Champions, with this being a new social space, and they say within its walls, the weapons and armor of champions past and present lie dormant, waiting for those worthy enough to wield them. And they say Hall of Champions, as well as all of the activities coming with Into the Light, can be accessed via a node on the Director starting on April 9th, and that's where we'll go to earn rewards for playing Onslaught, with Shax being there to welcome players and provide quests to earn the first brave weapons, and by his side, as always, our side has some bounties for Onslaught as well, as a very special vanity reward once you unlock all of the Brave Arsenal, which of course is the Super Black Shader. And they say will increase Shax's hype, the new reputation linked to playing Onslaught and completing bounties, and at the same time, will complete ranks and earn new trophies of bravery, and these will serve to unlock a very special armor set, one reminiscent of the beginnings of Destiny 2, and Titans, Warlocks, and Hunters will each have their own group of chests with a curated role of each armor piece. So here is a better look at the armor for all three of the classes. We've had a bit of a look at Hunters, but this image allows us to get a better look at the Warlock and Titan armor pieces, so pretty cool that we'll get curated versions of those by playing the new content. But in terms of next week's reveal, Bungie say on April 2nd at 10am Pacific, here's a summary of the topics we'll touch on. Firstly, the return of two classic exotic missions. And they hinted an exotic mission returning in the stream this week, but we'll actually get two of them, which is certainly more than most of us would have bargained for. And we can expect that those will have sort of updated perk pools, potentially with craftable weapons, and maybe even exotics. So this is potentially pretty huge, not least if one of them turned out to be the Whisper mission. And with us getting two, that is entirely possible, but Zero Hour and the Harbinger mission are in the mix as well. So we'll see what we get, but that's exciting nonetheless. They also say, though, that we'll see a preview of the three new PvP maps arriving in May, and 
and a new PvE challenge they call Pantheon. So that sounds equally interesting, potentially a third kind of component of new PvE content for the update. So excited to see that and I'll keep you posted with it next Tuesday. And Bungie point out once again, if you want to earn the emblems for the Twitch drops associated with those reveals, be sure to clock up as much time as you can with the stream on Tuesday. So cool stuff there. Otherwise, we get into a bunch of reminders and roundups here. And firstly, they reiterate there is a silver sale and we can get a 20% discount on the platform store of our choice up until April 2nd. So worth keeping in mind if you want to take advantage of it. Otherwise, for Riven's wish tokens, they say we've investigating an issue where some players weren't able to spend all of the wish tokens available in their inventory. And in every instance, we observed during the investigation that players had already spent the intended seven total tokens and inadvertently been granted an additional token from an earlier week's quest. So players can safely dismantle the extra tokens as the intended rewards have been claimed. But otherwise for known issues, they say the permeability perk on the Slammer Sword will always change the sword's elemental type to Strand, so that's unintended, and that gilding the Guardian game's title champ doesn't increment the number of times gilded counter. There's also one where Season of the Wish versions of Dreaming City weapons aren't dropping with the associated shaders, and that defeating a Tormentor too fast in the Arms Dealer Strike can sometimes result in the Elevated Dawn not unlocking, blocking progress to finish the mission. So that's fun as well, but a couple of extra things that they're looking into right there. For today though guys, that does it for the twin. So not a massive update, but a couple of juicy bits I suppose. As always, share your thoughts down in the comment section, and if you've enjoyed the video today, a rating below very much helps us out on the channel. Otherwise though, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you guys very soon. Uh, asks, can you take the limited edition ornament off and put it on another copy of the weapon, or is it just on that one weapon? So you can remove it, you can't put it on something else. It's cool. locked to the weapon that it dropped on. Makes sense, yeah. I mean, honestly, when it looks that good, you just gotta go ahead and stick with what you got, you know? <laughs> yeah, if players have a favorite shader that they want to put on a weapon, they can remove it and put the shader on. Yeah, that's true. You can't shade the ornament. You can go ahead and photo finish it up to your heart's yeah, content, yeah. obviously, that opportunity. Or super black, obviously, when the time arrives. I've just been hopping around with all the weapons here. Now I've got Blast Furnace and Elsie's rifle on. I know double primary isn't always meta, but... <laughs> We're gonna make it meta for the sake of this. They're both pretty, lost pretty, pretty solid weapons. <laughs> for the purposes of illustration. Now, here's that new perk that you both were talking about, Last Stand. On Again, reminder, this name will be changing in, in the live version. Yep. Yeah, so weapon final grows, blows grant bonus damage. Uh, melee and grenade final blows grant a larger damage bonus that can stack. So once you get this perk really rolling, it's very strong. Yeah. To sustain it. Nice way to go ahead and clear out a bunch of red bars and then take down that yellow bar with ease if yep. you go ahead and do everything correctly. Yeah, it ties nicely into the origin trait as well, because the origin trait yeah. grants you energy for your abilities, and then you get uh, bonus damage for getting ability final blows. Yeah, it really creates, <clears throat> creates that loop, honestly. You just become yeah. the self-fulfilling prophecy of death at that point, which, as a Guardian, is never a bad place to find <laughs> yourself, frankly. Uh, let's see here. Actually, also, too, is, you know, I know we touched, obviously, on Chris's personal favorite being Blast Virtus. Kelsey, was there anything uh, when you saw this land back on the list of the Brave Arsenal where you were like, finally, that one's back? I was, I was, I was real excited about Linus Howell. Linus <laughs> Howell. I mean, that's yep. just smart, honestly. That just makes sense. <laughs>